Hey guys, welcome to Cycle One, week six. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I presented the memory work in the classroom. I will also talk to you about what we chose to teach for art this week since it was a pick your choice kind of review option, but because I have the obesitarians, um, I wanted to give them a little more um, direction, if you will, and not option to pick their favorite. So, and I have a reason behind that. We had some absentees, so I just kind of um, knew which kids were there for what week, and it just helped me decide which lessons I kind of retaught. So I will review that, but I'll go ahead and just jump right in and talk to you about how I presented the memory work. So for math, what I did for the 11s was, um, and I wrote it on my board, so it's a nice little thing for myself and even for my parents to see that I'm just trying to be fun and have a good time. Okay, so I put let's move, how about jumping jacks? So for the first time through, I just say all the numbers, then I do write them up on my board nice and large. Since they are so young, I don't know how well they're actually seeing these numbers kind of written so closely together. So I figure if I drew, write them up on the board and they should be able to see the number sequence with a little more space there and, and easier to understand. So after we write it and say it, then we start saying it with jumping jacks. So have them all do it together the very first time and then you can start splitting off and say, okay, these two kids over here, you guys do jumping jacks and so on until you have made it all the way through seven times. So um, up next for the 12s, I started with, well, um, what foods come in a dozen and um, get them talking about that kind of thing, what, um, that eggs come in a dozen, but donuts. So then I said, okay, well, donuts, so what, um, that we chose that because we had an egg allergy in the room, okay? So even though we were just talking about pretend food that we couldn't even see, we chose donuts because donuts are very fun, okay? And then I said, well, what if we were an alligator and we wanted to eat these numbers? So what we did was as we were saying the numbers, we took our hands and we made like little alligator mouths and we ate the numbers and so on. So, but to get through it, instead of just going through and saying, okay, we're gonna do this five more times the same way, I'm sure even um, a small child would get bored with that. So then I said, well, what if you were a little baby alligator? And we went through the numbers and the baby alligator ate the numbers. Um, that gives me an idea. Maybe we could do one on the shark since that's such a big deal. So alligators this week, baby sharks next week. Anyway, okay. So then, um, then the daddy alligator did these big, huge chomps, and that's how we got through it, and it was a lot of fun, and we hit the 12s. So up for history, on my board, wrote it all out in black, but then I made sure to write the actual names of Homer and Pythagoras and Socrates and Archimedes in a different bright color so that they really jumped out. And we sang the song that Cece has provided, even though it was, I mean, it is really funny to sing with a country twang, some ancient Greeks, but it does come natural to me. So for Homer, we did some movements. So for Homer, you just pretend to be writing on a little piece of paper. And then for Pythagoras, uh, we were pretending to count on their fingers. Socrates, I just do the move for like um, philosopher or thinker like this. And then Archimedes, take your hands and pretend to be creating something like this. So and then you, for the song, you just kind of keep going through that. You say, Archimedes, a famous inventor, shape Western ideas. And then for the next part, ancient Greek city states were among the first democracy. And then just sing through that. And that was a lot of fun. Having the little movements made it um, a fun song to sing and, and to do and give them the visuals too. Okay, so vertebrates. Um, I had a lot of fun with this and kind of said, have you guys ever been to the farm? And I kept putting this emphasis of this funny bee at the end of farm and play that up nice and big. And I just really like to bring the element of fun for the, the much smaller kids. And I guess any age would enjoy that too. So um, that's what I did. I talked about the farm and broke down the acronym for them. And then we put some movements to it as well. So you do fish lips like this for a fish and then we had the kids hop to pretend to be a frog for amphibians and for reptiles you can take your arms and create a snake and then for mammals this is kind of fun to do like this for a mammal 
And then for bird, um, I, you know, I gave him the choice. I said, do you guys want to do a big bird's arms like this? Or do you want to just do little bird arms? And one kid said little bird's arms. So we took that and we just ran with it and got it done quickly. So then we moved right on to prepositions. So for prepositions, and I don't know how well you can see me if I crouch down, but we just crouched down a little, put our hands kind of on our knees and said down. And while you're down there, you can go during, except, for, and from. And we just kind of repeat that and you can have them all do it um, all at one time. Um, I do really like to um, have the kids like take a turn and, and do the moves themselves and then you hit it the number of times you need to and you're not just wearing them out but they seem to really enjoy having the opportunity to do something themselves or be um, the leader for that if you will. So and for four you can really put it out there and then for from you can really snatch it back like that. Just have some fun with it. For Latin um, every week um, I have these printed out. I keep them in a page protector and these help us with um, the little pictures really help us with the pronunciation on how to say it correctly and I have each kid come up and help be the tutor and we use the pointer and we go through and we sing the song and because we hit this so many times um, each kid having a turn and then it repeating for the weeks they're catching on so it is working so use this at home use this at, in your classroom this is a great resource and I'll put it in the, I'll create a link for you so that you can print these off. These are free. So, and for geography, and in the past we have traced and things like that with um, dry erase or washable markers. And this week we didn't do that. Sometimes they get too busy drawing all over the place. So we stuck with having a little fish. We've used him before. So um, it's great to have it an idea and then just cycle through it and just keep it. Um, I have a little binder over here with pockets and so I got out my fish and we took the fish all around ancient Greece. There's some water there so it kind of makes sense but just kind of cycle through and move your little fish all over the place. Okay so I do have a specific request from one of my parents to help them with the movements for the timelines. So I will do that. So for India's Mauryan Empire, you're gonna touch your finger on your forehead like this, and then you're gonna trace out a road with your hands, okay? And then for Mayans of Mesoamerica, you're gonna draw a pyramid style building, but that has the flat parts to it. And Punic Wars, this sign language, sign language symbol for P, and then wars back and forth like this. Okay, Rome going to cross your fingers and go up like that that's R and then all of the signs for conquerors you're just going to take your arm out like this and the other one just goes over and down conquerors Greece you're going to take the G um, this is the sign language for G your hands like this but um, the Roman um, soldiers wore a helmet that had like a little place that came over their nose okay so you're going to take your G and trace so Roman dictator Julius Caesar, you're going to salute. Now, don't critique my salute. I don't know exactly how you, you get to choose. You can do it like this, straight across, however you want to make your dictator salute look like. So uh, dictator Julius Caesar. So then you're going to take your pinky and you're going to draw a J for the Julius Caesar part. And then for Caesar Augustus, you're going to hold your hand in the shape of a C. And you're going to take it over to your left shoulder and drop it down to your right hip. For Caesar Augustus, and then the Pax Romana um, is the symbol for peace, and you kind of put your hands together and twist, and then come down like this. So, Pax Romana, and then John the Baptist, you're going to make a J again, J, draw it in the air, and then for Baptist, you're going to take your hands, both of them like this, but then um, this way, and you're just going to baptize. I'm just trying to show you how the the hands look. That it's not just like a thumbs up. I was told on the video for that that it's um, kind of like putting your hands in the sign language uh, position for A. But that's for both of them. So that's that. So for art, um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I knew which kids didn't make it for week one so they would have missed oils. So I felt very um, motivated to teach oils to especially the young obesitarians. And I just have a blank sheet here that I think I got off of maybe CC Connected so that you can go through and teach soils and then they have a place to draw them. Okay, so um, and then for again absenteeism, we had some kids that didn't make week five for 
the 3D shapes. So after we hit oils, we showed a little bit on how to draw some 3D art, uh, 3D shapes. So I will link that as well. This is another lady's video from YouTube. And she is amazing because I was able to draw this. Okay, so and then to kind of wrap it all up, I did choose to um, hit on perspective. So just have a picture for your small ones on what perspective looks like and you can explain it to them. Sorry. So like for the palm tree and the and the road here, you can say, well, this palm tree is larger and then you've got a, a smaller one back there and just kind of talk about how things look smaller as they get farther away. So, but again, it's your choice, but I think, or, or their choice, however you want to present it as the, as the tutor, but it's always good to give them guidance. So that's what I did. Um, so for review, um, last week we made sure that we hit um, all the timeline um, motions from week one through week six. So that was a great, great way to review. And then after that, because they are so young, we don't necessarily play a game every week. We do sit down and they love to color. So I did buy this resource from Etsy and like this is the coloring sheet for that pairs with the history. And so it's got all of our famous ancient Greeks that we're speaking about. And if this is something that you're interested in, I do want to show you that um, now it doesn't necessarily work for four and five year olds, but it comes with an extra sheet with questions that your child can fill out. So they're learning a little bit more or actually applying some things that they've learned. So that's what we do. And it is available if you buy it, you can share it with your classroom. That was something. So I'll link that because she gave us a deal. It's not my, um, product, but, um, and I don't receive anything for passing that along to you, but it's just a really great resource. And that was the, um, the science that I showed earlier. I'll link that as well. So this was something great that we could cover, um, and color all these things while we're doing review. But so I will give them the color sh coloring sheets, but I also get out, um, my foundations guide and I just flip to the back where each um, category or subject is listed and we just go over all the stuff and for that age they really enjoy it and then it keeps them from being wild and out of control so um thank you guys so much for tuning in like and share my videos and subscribe thanks thank for you. watching